A good way to answer the question about why a vacuum filter is important is to first briefly understand how a vacuum cleaner works. So the vacuum cleaner essentially is a machine that pulls air, including dirt and debris, through uh, a system and then expels it at the other end. And it's the job of the filter to trap as much of that dirt, debris, uh, microbes, fine particles as it can inside the system and only allow the clean air to come out. And in that way, you're essentially cleaning the floor, the air, whatever it is that you're cleaning with the vacuum cleaner. So the filter, the filter's job is to trap all the dirt that you're picking up and making sure that the air that's coming out the other end is clean and fresh. As a consequence, uh, the, job, the job that the filter plays makes it a very important component of the overall vacuum system. So it's nice to have a good motor, it's important to have strong seals, but without a good filter, essentially your vacuum cleaner is being ineffective. So good filtration is critical and essential to the optimal performance of your vacuum cleaner. What many professional cleaners don't realize is that there are a number of different types of filters that have been designed for specific applications. So while most vacuum cleaners will come with the general type of filter, there are other filters you could consider based on the type of work that you're doing. So what I'd like to do today is talk about some of the types of filters you could use, both uh, the general type of filters as well as the specialty type filters. And let's start with perhaps dry application. If I'm using a vacuum cleaner that's designed to clean uh, in a dry mode, uh, what types of filters could we use? And, and I'll talk more about from how uh, Centaur has designed uh, its vacuums. So if we took um, a dry vacuum cleaner, there are typically two or three levels of filtration uh, built into the design of the vacuum cleaner. The first uh, would be a bag filter. And a bag filter is the, perhaps the least effective filter in terms of capturing fine particles, but it's amazing at capturing big particles. And why that's important is that all the gunk and dirt that we typically see with our eyes is captured in those bags, and it ensures that the tank that we're using uh, stays clean. So it's easy to uh, remove, dispose of, and put in another bag and, and keep going. The second level of filtration is a cloth filter. And in our case, it's, it's uh, integrated with a gasket that is used to uh, provide the seal between the tank and, and the motorhead. But the cloth filter is great, uh, a great general purpose uh, dry filter. It will capture most of the bigger particles that are not captured in the bag will be caught in, in the cloth filter. However, the cloth filter is not designed to capture fine particles. So for fine particles, there's a third layer of filtration. Something like this. This is a cartridge, it's a, it's a micron filter, so this will capture um, particles that are up to 0.5 microns in size. Um, and these things will be captured inside of the, the pleats of the cartridge filter, and clean air then passes through uh, the vacuum cleaner. So with those three layers of filtration, you have uh, essentially a very good system of ensuring that all the debris you're picking up, all the small particles you're picking up stay inside of the machine. Another alternative to the cartridge filter is a HEPA cartridge filter. So you could upgrade, for example, and pay a little bit more for a, for a HEPA uh, filter. Uh, and the, the reason why you might want to do that is that the HEPA filter captures particles that are up to 0.03 microns in size. And what that means is that the air that's coming through is much cleaner. It's also taking care of a lot of the um, uh, bacteria and other microbes that might be in the air are captured inside this filter. So it's a much more effective filter, especially in the areas where that's an issue. For example, in the healthcare, healthcare facilities or labs where clean air, uh, very clean air is essential. Now we'll talk a little bit about um, a slight variation on this. In, in certain circumstances where you're dealing with very fine dust, um, the cloth filter that I showed you earlier may not be effective enough. You may need to upgrade this. And the reason why you would do that is um, if you had very fine particles, it's not being captured in the cloth filter, it's going to get stuck in your HEPA filter, which will constrain the operation of your machine. So what you want to do is try and capture that at an earlier stage of the filtration process. So an alternative to the cloth filter is uh, what we call the gray filter or a fine dust filter. 
This fine dust filter is made from a material uh, that is like the face masks that we've been used to wearing all this time, and it captures a lot of the fine particles. So what this means, I've got now two stages at which I can capture these fine particles. At the, at the gray filter or the fine dust uh, filter, as well as the cartridge filter, which comes as a, as a follow-up filter. In this way, the air that's passing through is capturing all those fine particles. And those fine particles, to give you an example, are generated when you may be working in a construction site and there's drywall dust, or you may be grinding stone, which is generating very fine stone particles. That's when you want to use something like this to capture the fine dust particles and preserve the life of the more expensive um, a HEPA filter or micron filter that you might be using. So the other uh, condition we can talk about is when we are doing, um, uh, when you're working in a wet condition. And the filtration there, requirements there are quite different because you don't have the fine particles in the air. Rather, they may be suspended in the water, but you're picking up water which is mixed with gunk and dirt and things like that. So for most applications, uh, most general applications, a filter like this, this is our wet filter, which you can see is made of a, a mesh, and it's a synthetic material, so this thing doesn't rust, um, it's waterproof, uh, it's something that lasts for a really long time, and very easy to look after. But this is what you would use generally uh, for um, uh, vacuuming in a wet condition. Now, in certain circumstances, uh, the water that you may be picking up uh, may have suspended particles in it, and these particles may be very fine. An example is if you were grinding stone using water, now you've got a, a slurry, a mix of uh, these very fine particles and water. And that could be a problem because the mesh is fairly large and those fine particles could go through this and because of the power of the vacuum could get sucked through the vacuum cleaner. So in, in order to avoid that and to preserve the life of the motor, you might consider using something like this, which is a very fine mesh filter and this is called a slurry filter. So this will prevent all those fine particles from going back into the motor and stay inside the tank. So this is a, a, a filter that is used typically by those who are working in the stone restoration business or, or concrete prep um, business where, where they are constantly dealing with slurries. Um, and, and this helps them ensure that they prolong the life of their machine um, by keeping the slurry out of the motor. One of the most, uh, perhaps, ignored items uh, about filters is the care for those filters. Uh, it's very important to look after the filters in your vacuum because, as we discussed before, they play a key role in trapping all the dirt and gunk and uh, stuff that you don't want uh, back out in the air. So looking after them and making sure that they're clean uh, will ensure that your vacuum cleaner continues to operate effectively. So let's talk a little bit about how you look after these different um, uh, filter systems. So let's go through uh, the different types of filters. So if you're using a bag filter, uh, the rule of thumb is you want to replace this when it's half full or in two weeks, whichever one comes first. And the reason for that is um, if it's half full, it, you, it's already done the job it needs to do. As it starts getting uh, more full, it's going to impact the performance of your machine. So you, you want to get back into full performance, full suction, half full, take it out. The other reason is that even if it's not half full, but two weeks have passed, if you've picked up any organic materials or anything really um, that might start to decay, what you'll find is that if you switch the machine on in a couple of weeks, you're going to find the air to smell, this is going to get moldy. So the best thing to do is every couple of weeks, change your bag. That'll make sure that the system stays clean continually and your home smells fresh. The second type of filter we'll talk about is the cloth filter. The care for the cloth filter is very easy. You'll see, if, if you see a visible uh, deposit of dirt on the outside, that after you try shaking it off, doesn't come off, it's time to wash that filter. And these filters are easy to wash. You throw it in a washing machine um, and let it air dry after it's done and, and replace it. And this will last you a very long time. Um, but as soon as you start seeing the dirt, if it collects too much, it will again impede the flow of air, which will impact again the performance of your, or your vacuum. So uh, as regularly as you can, wash your um, cloth filter. As far as the cartridge type filters are concerned, these cannot be washed. Um, the particles get stuck and trapped in the fine pleats of the material, inside the material as well, 
So initially, it's important to keep the surface clean. And the way you do that is maybe use something like compressed air and blow out all the dirt that may be stuck loosely to the surface of this kind of a filter. However, over time, the dirt is going to get trapped inside and again will impede the performance of the filter and the performance of your vacuum. So it's recommended that once a year or so, you change your uh, cartridge filters, whether it's a HEPA filter or a Micron filter. Once a year, make it a habit, change your filter. The next type of filter we'll talk about is the fine dust filter. And the treatment of the fine dust filter is very much like the cartridge filters. Because of the material it's made from, you cannot wash this. So using compressed air, you blow off any loose particles that are captured on the surface. And once a year or so, you replace this filter um, as a part of your maintenance process. Uh, it'll last you a long time. It has an integrated um, uh, gasket on it. Um, but as soon as you start seeing the, uh, the, the particles sticking to it and not coming off with the compressed air, it's, it's time to change the filter. As far as the um, wet filters are concerned, whether it's a mesh filter or a slurry filter, these are very easy to care for. Everything is waterproof. You can wash these, spray them down, let them air dry, and keep using them for, for a really long time. So here are some pro tips uh, to think about when you're considering filtration. Uh, the first one is if you have a wet-dry vacuum, it is likely that you don't have um, a cartridge type filter on your uh, machine. And you may sometimes find yourself in a situation where you need to vacuum uh, fine dust particles. Um, a cloth filter that comes with a wet-dry vacuum is typically not enough. So what you could do is, uh, in order to adapt your wet-dry vacuum to dealing with fine dust particles, is to get yourself a fine dust filter. A gray filter will work amazing to stop the fine dust from going through the machine and back out in the system uh, and, and essentially adapt your wet-dry machine to allow you to do fine dust uh, vacuuming. Second pro tip to consider um, is that uh, when you do have a cloth filter and you decide you've washed it, it is essential that you let it dry completely. So while it's air drying, it's great, but make sure it's dry completely because two things will happen. One is if it hasn't dried completely, you put it back in the machine, you could start over time developing odors that are, that are coming from the mold and other bacteria that may be growing in your, um, in your filter. So make sure it's completely dry. The second thing is if it is even slightly moist and you start vacuuming with it, uh, the dust and dirt that you're picking up is going to cake on the surface, which will again make the vacuum cleaner or render the vacuum filter less effective, a lot less effective. So the best thing to do is after you've washed it, make sure it's completely dry before you put it back into the vacuum cleaner. So another pro tip uh, to consider is the replacement of um, your cartridge filters. Now, I found people are less willing, perhaps more hesitant, to change the cartridge filters because of the price point or, or some other reason. But the reality is that over time, uh, tiny particles that we can't see get trapped in the pleats and in the material of these filters. And what that does is it uh, festers and can grow, plus it also um, reduces the performance or compromises the performance of your vacuum cleaner. So as a rule of thumb, once a year, change your filter. It will make sure that your vacuum cleaner does a better job and you're more efficient in the cleaning that you need to do.